Hey, this is Matt Stone of 180 Degree Health, and uh, I'm here just doing an interview with the person who came to visit Challen. I did one to start, and I'm um, going to do another one here. She's been here for a couple weeks, I think 15, 16 days or something like that. She leaves tomorrow. I just wanted to ask her some questions about her visit, um, you know, just see what kind of mistakes she's making and was making in the past and that were corrected while she was here, um, and just get some overall feel for, you know, what it was like to be here for a while. Um, so I know you were making some mistakes at home. Part of the reason for you to come up here uh, was for Challen to help you sort of troubleshoot uh, some things you were doing at home that uh, were causing your your uh, refractometer reading to crash. Uh, what were some of the things that he caught and how effective was your stay and, and how, how are things working out for you now after you've been here for two weeks? Um, well, at home I was, um, see, I come from the Weston A. Price style, uh, or Weston A. Price foundation style thinking as far as the whole grains and, and whatnot. And so, um, apparently at home I was still trying to be a little too healthy, <laughs> as Challen put it. Um, so when I got here and he started serving me foods, I, um, about fell out of the chair when, uh, initially I had to eat these things. <laughs> <laughs> but uh I ate him anyway cuz uh um he said it would help so I did and about 3 days after I got here we tested my numbers and I saw how incredibly good they looked my sugars had completely stabilized and I was starting to feel actually really good and so having been here the 2 weeks and eating the way he has me eating I think I've made more progress in 2 weeks than I was doing 6 months on my own at home. Yeah, and obviously I've picked up on that as well. I'm just wanting you to share with everybody here. I mean, just looking at her, she's got a lot more color in her face, and she was kind of like a zombie, really tired and, and fragile and had to rest and couldn't have any exertion really at all when she first got here, and now she's out swimming and, and uh, frolicking around and actually doing a lot of things that she hasn't done in a long time. Um, I know one of your biggest problems was having your uh, refractometer reading uh, go into the basement. And I keep telling people that this is a, um, you know, in the RBTI it's referred to as a sugar reading and everyone's wondering if there's really sugar in the urine. Um, but the thing that I found fascinating is that it really does, you know, a low reading on that refractometer really does coincide with all these different symptoms of, uh, of hypoglycemia. And I've seen a lot of those in you that you know, I didn't even recognize before. We talk about some of those things that you experience when that reading drops and what it's done for you to actually keep your reading up at the uh, the optimal level um, since you've been able to stabilize with Challen. Well, before I started the RBT, I was having a lot of blackouts and, and actually seizures, which I had tried several medications for. Um, but when I started the RBTI uh, I, with Challen, I never did have another seizure or blackout the whole time I've been doing it, despite the fact that my refractometer reading crashed, um, I was still able to respond to it with sugar or fruit and bring that back up and that prevented any of the blackouts or seizures that I was having. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't know the science behind a refractometer and how that can pick up the sugars in the body and you know I probably never really will know but I do know that you know when it falls below normal which um, even today the lowest I've gone is a one and I eat a piece of fruit you know that pops me right back up to a two so somehow uh, there's a correlation there and it prevents um, the issues that I used to have with hypoglycemia so um, I would say that it, it works how I don't know, but I'll keep doing it. Um, you've actually registered a double zero on that refractometer reading before where you'd have no solutes in your urine whatsoever. Uh, what does that feel like? I don't know if I can say the word on the interview, <laughs> um, but not good. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I and I, I would do that actually several times a day. And before I started the RBTI, this is why I would um, 
black out and have seizures several times a day. And at the hospital, you know, they would think that maybe it's something to do with blood sugar and they'd be testing my blood glucose all day long and they'd never catch it. But with the refractometer, um, I'm able to catch it and prevent, you know, those effects. Now I do get really tired if it happens. Um, but the last couple of weeks having fixed that, um, I, I've a few times gone below a 0.5, but I haven't felt it. Um, which is how it works as you gain energy, the body doesn't, um, you don't feel it as much, but, uh, yeah, definitely it isn't a good feeling. Yeah. It's, I just wanted to, I, I know it's obvious these questions, but, um, to people who haven't experienced this, it sounds kind of wacky. And I wanted people to understand that there's really obvious feelings and symptoms that go along with these refractometer readings wherever they are, whether they're high or low, and and uh, you feel the difference. And uh, even even I, when I had my first low refractometer reading, the reason I checked it and caught it was I was feeling really funky and kind of lightheaded, and uh, I knew something just didn't feel quite right. And I thought, you know, I feel kind of like my sh- my sugars might be low. I think I'll I think I'll test. And for the first time in a couple weeks, I actually looked at the test and it was a little bit low. Sure enough, so. Uh, yeah, I've just I've really noticed it's dramatic, and uh, the tool is really just fascinating. I just kind of over the moon about it right now. Um, w- w- your sugars today are about the best that they've been on your whole trip, um, and I think a lot of people are still uh, really skeptical. They get really really freaked out when they hear that we're eating something here besides. Uh, you know, wholesome foods that our ancestors ate or, or something like that. Could you describe what you've eaten today that's given you such, uh, made you feel so good and kept your sugars uh, so stable? Sure. Um, for breakfast this morning, we had some oatmeal with uh, some different dried fruits in there and then put some maple syrup, some molasses, and some brown sugar. <laughs> and then... Uh, also had um, an apple turnover, you know, from the Walmart frozen section. Pepperidge Farm is awesome. Um, and then I had a Yoplait yogurt, the uh, real sugar kind. And then I had some pineapple. Um, lunch was a Marie Callender's chicken pot pie. Um, some applesauce. And a glass of milk. Oh, and then I had some ice cream with some butterscotch syrup and carob chips. And that was lunch. And uh, my blood sugar reading has stayed between a three and a one today. And I only did drop once to where I had to eat a piece of apple and that was it. Yeah, I mean, I hate to freak people out by asking you exactly what you've been eating. A lot of people are asking, you know, what are you guys eating? And I know if I tell people, you know, 80% of the people out there that have uh, an infatuation with health food will immediately think that this is uh, crazy and, and run for the hills. And uh, But again, I, I think it was worth asking the question and sharing uh, what exactly you are eating. And, uh, you know, of course, with that, she's taking some mineral supplements and things like that. But, you know, really in the state that she's in, eating highly digestible and palatable foods is about the best medicine uh, that she can get, and it's really helping a lot. Um, will you tell us a little bit about uh, some of the things that you've seen? Because you've been hanging around the office for a couple weeks, and you've met Challen, you've met uh, a lot of the people that he works with locally. Um, what are some stories or some things that really stand out to you that impressed you that people have experienced since they started working with him? Well, even though I'm coming to kind of understand the numbers, I mean, I don't, you know, see everything that Challen sees, but he's taken the time to um, teach me as people come in and, you know, they allow me to sit in. But I did get a kick the other day. Um, A a woman who uh, actually had breast cancer, and uh, she no longer has that, but her husband has started the program, and he came in and Um, apparently uh, she's been pushing it on him and he hasn't really wanted to stick with it or um, follow his plan and so he hasn't but he came in because he was having some terrible foot pain and and he could hardly walk into the office and he sat down and and uh, Chown was looking at his numbers and he says well you're not following the program and and he says no no I haven't and Chown says well 
you're eating sweets after two. And, and he says, well, I'm not going to lie to you, but I, I did have a pizza and, and then I had some cookies. And he sat there first thing. He's like, oh yeah, and some fruit cups. And uh, Challen pointed out some other things. And, you know, the guy, he was, Challen says he was hamming it up because I was sitting in the background giggling. But uh, anyway, so Challen um, gave him the instructions on what to do. And Challen actually told him how many hours it would take for the pain in his foot to be gone. And I'm not kidding you, the man called the next day and said he was feeling so good and had zero pain and was the exact hour that Challen said it would go away. And um, then he sent his mother and her friend in because he was so impressed by that. And so that's, I mean, there's a lot more that I have seen, but that one really stands out to me probably because it was so funny and I was giggling so hard. Yeah, and I think... um I think that's what's so hard once you've experienced some of this is uh, trying to communicate it to other people. It just sounds crazy. And uh, and you see it and it's just so badass, some of it, that you really, um, it's just hard to describe and, and be able to, uh, you know, convince somebody else that something like that is really possible. We, you know, we see this kind of crazy stuff happening again and again. Um, and it's really simple explanations given for uh, how he was able to determine that. So it's it's bizarre stuff, and it's really hard to r- wrap your head around. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just no shortage of that when you're here in person and you're actually seeing real people coming in and out of his office and, and what he's able to do. And, and, you know, I don't know. What else could you say about it? Um, so... Uh, anything else you want to share with with anybody before we wrap this up? Uh, this is your big chance to, you know, basically share how you feel about this whole program and what you feel like it can do for others uh, who might be having health problems and, uh, you know, some mysterious things going on that they're not having much luck with. Um, any last, last words? Yeah, you know, um, throughout my uh, illness, I had done a lot of research And, um, you know, there's a lot of things out there that make a lot of sense when you read it and you look at the science and and whatnot, but really none of it worked. And and I've read a lot of books and a lot of scientific studies, and and I understand a lot of what they were saying, but it didn't work. Um, Now, when it comes to the RBTI, uh, I can't explain it, like you'd said. You know, I'm not a chemist, I'm not a scientist, and, and this goes way beyond... Um, anything I think I could comprehend, uh, but it works and 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 fast, and um, you know I, I don't know what to say other than that. Is it it just it's miraculous what it does for people if they do it, and um, what shows up in the numbers is so precise, and it's been very precise for me and everybody I've seen come in or call. And but you know I I can't explain that to people so all I can give is is an emotional response and um, sometimes that's good enough and sometimes it's not but you know I don't think anyone could really explain it or even put it into a scientific paper but all we can say is that it works. Well, I appreciate you sharing and uh, I'll let you off the hook now and go eat some dinner, but. Uh, <laughs> um, Thanks for, uh, you know, getting, you were definitely one of the big uh, reasons I came up here to check this out, and uh, I don't regret it. I I think this is definitely going to lead somewhere and be able to help a lot of people out. So thanks for sharing, and uh, that's it.